We've got a culture advisor um, and we're working closely with him and um, yeah he, he advised the writers and you know the director producers about what um, how we do tangi, multi multi funeral um, and then also Kawa and I bring in our experience, our personal experience, which, which is very, very much similar, but like bringing our own experience to it as well and sort of suggesting, oh, maybe we'll add this and that. I was fortunate enough to, to offer up one of my uncle's songs who had just passed away. Um, it's, it's a beautiful Māori song and um, yeah, we, we got to put it in. So it was quite fitting because it felt so real as well. So, you know, and tangi is important in Māori culture. So it was really, uh, yeah, it hit home quite a lot. Right down to the to what um, sort of clothing would wear, or um, having the the water at the door for the hand washing. All the details we, we wanted to get right, because I think all of you know all of it's in the details as well. Um, yeah, it was very very hard to sort of. It was a hard time because you know it, there was a lot of pressure to try and try and get it right because you don't want to get that stuff wrong. Uh, we started working with well, Kawa's cousin who, who he teaches Taiha. Mm. I was watching YouTube videos because I never really learnt Taiha growing up, so um, a lot of it we had to do on our on our own. Yeah. That was great too to sort of showcase that that uh, warrior side of the Maori culture. You know, um, yeah, very special. The, all of those, the the, the tangi, the Taiha stuff. Um, they were very special things to, to portray. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just how we grew up. Um, we weren't allowed to, we're not allowed to wear shoes in the house. It's a respect thing. Um, I remember if I wore shoes in my, my grandmother's house, you know, you get a bit of a, bit of a smack on the, on the hand. <laughs> but so we never did. Name pronunciations, it's always very important. We try and, um, you know, we try and educate um, non moldy on how to pronounce it and like, Sometimes it's not easy to say, which is, you know, we totally understand, but um, as long as they're aware that, uh, you know, that it's, it's set a certain way, like the names in that. I get, I get Tane a lot still, but it's Tane. It's actually Tane. Australia is quite a diverse place. There's a lot of cultures here, so, and New Zealand being so closely, you know, related to Australia. Um, yeah, I think it was just a matter of time until, you know, they brought in a, a, like a, a Kiwi family or Maori family or something. So, yeah, I think it's I think it's a natural step. When we came on, we were sort of the bad boy. Like Tane was a thief type thing, and um, and yeah, we didn't want to play those stereotypes because you know I guess <coughs> there is it is uh, alive and well that sort of stereotype of uh, the brown person who's the the criminal, you know, and we wanted to play away from that, and yeah, and, and the writers and that totally agreed, and that, that was never their intention. Um, and when we came to the bay, it was all about changing our sort of trajectory and um, our journey, changing from you know the, the bad guy to the the good guy. Yeah. So it's very important. And yeah, absolutely. The, the writers and we, we're always in conversation about that sort of stuff. You know, I get good uh, feedback when I when I go home to my hometown, Waitle. Um yeah, it's something something different. Like I guess they can sort of um, relate to it a bit more because they they can see their culture on screen. So I think it's a I think it's a positive thing. Uh, my daughter, she doesn't really watch it anymore. I don't think. Um, yeah, I think she she prefers to watch other shows, Stranger Things or something like that. But yeah, <laughs> which is fine. Probably too much kissing. It might be weird for her. <laughs>